I think we've seen over the past few months clear Turkish overtures to Egypt, a bid by Turkey to open dialogue and discussions uh, with Egypt. We've seen prominent political commentators, including the likes of Yassin Aktay, calling for the need for dialogue and discussion over some of the contentious issues, uh, whether that's the East Mediterranean or whether that's Libya. And Yassin Aktay even went so far as to break with previous rhetoric and call the Egyptian army a great army that's worthy of respect. Egypt, on the other hand, has been particularly cautious over these overtures and quite frankly unenthusiastic. And that's because of the timing of in which these overtures, these Turkish overtures are taking place. When Turkey first intervened in Libya, when it rescued the GNA, it completely upended the military dynamics such that it caused enough consternation and concern in Egypt that Sisi offered the Cairo initiative, which was essentially a message to Turkey of, okay, well done, bravo, you rescued the GNA, let's sit down and discuss cooperation over the future of Libya. But Turkey not only rejected the Cairo initiative and quite frankly mocked it, Turkey insisted that it would go after Sirt and that it would even target the oil crescent afterwards. In other words, Turkey in this euphoria as a result of the military power it had demonstrated outright ruled out any possibility of talks with Egypt. And it is in this context that Egypt is viewing these overtures, that Turkey is only coming today because suddenly it finds itself in a position of increasing weakness and it has not capitalized in Libya in a manner that it would have liked. It did not take Sirt, it has not taken the oil crescent, and Cairo believes that one of the main reasons that Turkey was unable to take Sirt is because of its threat to intervene and of course because of the Russian Wagner group. In other words, Turkey does not have the power to assert itself in the manner that it initially claimed. Moreover, Cairo is noting that within Tripoli itself, it's not entirely easy going for Turkey. Sarraj is dragging his heels on the implementation of contracts with Turkey, which is upsetting Turkey and forcing Turkey to send delegation after delegation to pressure as Sarraj. Moreover, Sarraj's resignation took place without any liaising with Turkey, suggesting perhaps that he's more in favor of the US and German diplomatic approaches than he is uh, in, in, in ensuring those bilateral ties uh, with uh, Turkey. And the EU, France is dominating EU policy towards Turkey in asserting a more aggressive approach. In other words, Cairo believes that Turkey is chasing Egypt and that Egypt is not the one chasing Turkey and that Egypt has no need to chase Turkey given that a lot of the dynamics are starting to turn against Turkey's interest. And this is why we see that despite the earnest nature of some of Turkey's overtures, Egypt, quite frankly, is still mulling it over and presenting diplomatic responses such as I need to consult the likes of the UAE and Saudi Arabia before I can engage in any constructive dialogue with Turkey. That's the dynamic surrounding uh, the prospect of Turkey-Egypt talks and that's why it hasn't been as easygoing as perhaps everybody would have liked.